It's time for the Hive of the Nine, the Pro Show! And now, here's everybody's favorite two-stepping host, Michael Bro! Oh, hi there! Welcome everybody to the Bro Show! It's April 1st, 2011, and that means, of course, it is... Yes, that's right, April Fool's Day. It's a great, crazy, wild, wacky day, and you never know what's going to happen on the show. I'm not even going to look behind me to see what's going on. Anyway, we got a jam-packed show. Um, just so you know, that was the bunny hop that I was trying to perfect because Easter is right around the corner, and there's a great new-looking movie coming out today called Hop that I want to go check out and see how cool it is. Plus, it's got Kaylee Cuoco in it, and she's kind of cute. Anyway, we got a jam-packed show, new two-minute toy review, and lots of toy news, so let's get right to the news. Mike, take it away. Thanks, Mike. Okay, folks, so this week airing on the Cartoon Network is going to be the third season finale. That's right, third season. They've already gone three seasons. Um, it's going to be a one-hour special that's going to feature some original trilogy characters, um, most notably some Bosque-like aliens, and Peter Mayhew comes in to voice Chewbacca. So that looks to be a phenomenal episode. I can't wait to see the walking carpet going through and just having fun in the Clone Wars. We also have found out who's going to be the new Lois Lane in the Superman reboot movies. Amy Adams, star of such films as Enchanted, Doubt, and most recently nominated for an Oscar in The Fighter, is going to be playing the plucky reporter. I can't wait to see her take on this spunky character and bring her to life on the big screen. Also this weekend is going to be WrestleMania 27. That's right, I'm a wrestling fan, and I just wanted to bring it to your attention that that's what's happening. Um, we're going to be seeing some great matches between The Miz and John Cena, with uh, The Rock kind of thrown in the mix somewhere as the host of WrestleMania, so we'll see how well that goes. We also have Edge versus Alberto De Rio, but the real reason that I want to watch it, and I'm sure that everybody else out there wants to watch WrestleMania, Triple H is back, and he's going to be wrestling The Phenom, The Undertaker, to take down his streak. I personally think The Undertaker's going to go 19-0 walking out of WrestleMania, but we'll find out, and I'll bring you the results of at least a couple matches next week on the news. Finally, for this weekend, we, it actually already started. The G.I. Joe convention started yesterday down in Florida at Walt Disney World. We're going to be seeing all sorts of cool new toys, I'm sure. We're going to see lots of great news. I personally will be getting my news from JoeBattleLines.com, where I get a lot of my great G.I. Joe news from. And I'll probably bring some of those highlights next week's show as well. But... I hope we do find out about G.I. Joe 2, the movie, too, and that its title doesn't end up being G.I. Joe 2, the Arache Kage Boogaloo. That's it for toy news and geeky news for this week. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Mike, for all that great news. Now, let's get right into our two-minute toy review. Check it out. Okay, folks, okay, I admit it, that was our April Fool's Day joke on you, but you got to admit, everything is much cooler with the Indiana Jones theme, right? Well, let's go ahead and get right to our now two-minute toy review for this week. We're going to be covering one of the G.I. Joe figures from the Pursuit of Cobra line. That's right, folks, we're going to take a look at the G.I. Joe Night Spotter, Low Light. Let's take a look. This week's two-minute toy review will take a look at the figure that was once afraid of the dark, the G.I. Joe Low Light. This figure is of course made by Hasbro Toys and is in the 4 inch scale for G.I. Joe figures as they have been the last few years. The character this figure is based on was introduced in the 1986 post Serpentor era of G.I. Joe. So let's take a quick look at the G.I. Joe Night Spotter, ok he's really a sniper, <laughs> low light. Looking first at the card art for this figure, it is a really sharp design for the Pursuit of Cobra line of figures for G.I. Joe. My only wish is that the file card would have been styled more like the 25th anniversary line or like the old school file cards from the 1980s figures. Still, Cooper G. McBride here, better known as Low Light, looks really close to his original 1986 counterpart, right down to the black and gray outfit, red goggles, and even red shoulder pad. Using the same body as Beachhead from this same line and adding wrist padding and the jacket, this completes the overall look of this awesome Low Light. The only real issue here is that the jacket they put on Lowlight with all its great detail is a little bit bulky and a little too cumbersome at times. Now as for accessories, this guy is loaded to the hilt and not just with a figure stand and a weapon. 
As you can see, there is everything from a radio to a very big backpack to a sniper silencer to loose goggles and even a bullet case with a loose bullet. Be very careful not to lose the bullet. It is very tiny and scaled for these figures in particular. Of course, this being the sniper for the Joes, Low Light comes with a sniper rifle case and his sniper rifle and detachable scope inside. Also as a note, the rifle scope can even attach to his left leg. Best of all, almost all of these accessories can fit in the backpack or be carried by the figure. Now being a sniper, Low Light really needs to be able to hold his gun. With the double jointed knees and swivel arm battle grip, he almost has all the articulation he needs. Add a swivel to each wrist and a joint that lets the left hand go left and right and the right hand go up and down and Low Light is ready to spot his objective and complete his mission. So what's the bottom line? Plain and simple, if you see this figure, pick it up. He is so worth it. I got mine a couple months back from a pre-order with smalljoes.com, a great site for Joe toys. Mine was priced at about 7 bucks when pre-ordered in a set of 4 figures. Definitely a figure worth 7 to 10 bucks, but really not much more than that. And if you see more than one on the pegs at a retail store, leave the extras so a kid can find a really cool figure or a fellow Joe fan can add this Night Spotter to his collection. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that two-minute toy review of Low Light from G.I. Joe, The Pursuit of Cobra Line. Um, I'm not sure where he got to. He said he had to go off and take care of something, so I hope he'll be back soon. Hopefully, maybe he'll show up next week for a little cameo. Who knows? Anyway, it's been a wild and wacky week, so I do apologize right up front before I end the show this week with no new, toy, or no new movie review or TV show review. It's, I wasn't feeling too well on Monday or Tuesday, so I didn't get a chance to write up those. However, this weekend, I plan to go see Hop, and I'll bring that review for you next week as well. Um, I'll also bring some of the more latest news from G.I. Joe with the G.I. Joe convention that's happening this weekend, mentioned in the news earlier. So look forward to that. And by the way, baseball season has started, so I can't wait. I grew up as a Boston Red Sox fan, and I can't wait to see them play. But living near the Philly area, yeah, i got to admit, I'm starting to like the Phillies too, so I have two great teams to watch, and I hope that you guys will cheer them on with me or cheer on your own home team as well. Growing from Louisiana, we didn't have any home team baseball, and we still don't, so guess what? Red Sox, Phillies, you're my teams. You guys have a whoa, oh, oh boy, I see where Lola got to. He's uh, trying to get something behind me with his sniper rifle, so I'm going to go, whoa, and um, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.